Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville, here for our weekly Marian chat. My friends, there's always something beautiful to talk about regarding our sweet mother, uh, the, the glorious mother of God, and our spiritual mother. And as we are now entering uh, in the last days of November, I want to go back to November 27th, which we just celebrated, the Feast of the Miraculous Medal, the anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady of Grace to uh, St. Catherine Labore. This is a big one, my friends, because the November 27th, uh, 1830 apparitions really begin what we now call the Age of Mary. In fact, this last anniversary was the 187th anniversary since Our Lady started the Age of which has been named the Age of Mary because in all the ages of the church, and some of them are packed with Marian love and devotion and truth, this age excels all the others. From 1830 to the present, our period of time, which we're, we're graced to be living in, not only are we in the Age of Mary, but we're now living in what is rightly called the climax of the Age of Mary. We have more Marian dogmas, more uh, Marian apparitions approved by the church, more Marian Holy Fathers, more Marian Congresses. It's it's pretty much ubiquitous in, in terms of the spread of Our Lady from 1830 on compared to any other period of history. Now, I want to go to the Miraculous Medal and try to summarize uh, briefly the beautiful development of the message of Our Lady to the modern world. So in 1830, Our Lady appears to St. Catherine Labore, as you know, uh, and that first image, Our Lady has her hands outstretched. She's crushing the head of the serpent with her foot. Uh, rays are coming from her outstretched hands. And on the front, in the, the first image now, the first vision that St. Catherine Labore re receives, uh, the prayer states around the image, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. What do we have in that very first image? We have Mary's co redemptrix She's crushing the head of Satan. And realize, uh, Mary's not concerned about uh, scholarly issues of, of ipsa, ipsum, in terms of the Latin. Uh, it's, it's she. She will crush your head. She's crushing the head of, of Satan, as we had with the, with the classic translation of St. Jerome uh, and the 19th and 20th century Magisterium as well. Then you have mediatrics of all graces. Graces are coming from her outstretched hands. Thirdly, you have a role as advocate because the prayer, O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate from the beginning of the age of Mary. The second vision, which would become the back of what we now call the miraculous medal, is an M connected to the cross. What does that mean? Co-redemption. Remember, co does not mean equal, my friends. It means with, that Mary participated with and under Jesus in the work of redemption, like no other creature. So we go from the miraculous medal, where we have these themes, co-redemptrix, mediatrix, advocate, very clear from the beginning of the age of Mary. We then go to Lourdes, 1858, the key messages of Lourdes. She says, I am the Immaculate Conception, which is actually the foundation of her role as co-redemptrix. And we'll talk about that in, a, in, a, in a, another uh, Marian Wednesday chat. And with Lourdes, we have two themes, the theme of reparation to God, and co-redemption, that is, praying, praying for the conversion of sinners, doing penance for the conversion of sinners. We go from Lourdes to Fatima, 1917. <coughs> and in Fatima, it is a clear message of reparation and co-redemption again. Uh, the angel of Portugal tells the kids, make of everything you can a sacrifice and offer it to the Most High God because he is already much offended. Uh, you have the whole theme of... Uh, uh, co-redemption in, in, in the order of you're doing everything to save souls, others. I mean, uh, Yashinta offered her sufferings. Francisco uh, was like a, a little rosary machine uh, in terms of constantly praying the rosary, both in reparation and for the conversion of sinners. Remember at Fatima, Our Lady appears as the co-redemptrix on October 13th, 1917. That's her image as of Our Lady of Sorrows. 28 years later, we go to Amsterdam, church-approved apparitions. The Lady of All Nations. What's the backbone of the message in Amsterdam? Very clearly, that heaven wants the proclamation 
of these three roles of Our Lady, these three motherly roles as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. She will repeat several times that the dogma is already assured. She says the, the, the uh, battle, the struggle will be hard and bitter, but the outcome is already assured. And she says very clearly at Amsterdam that only with the proclamation of this dogma will peace be brought to the world. Why is that? Because only when the truth of Our Lady's role is expressed can she fully activate that role. Well, why can't she fully activate it now? Because of our free will. See, the, the Pope's definition of this truth would be the ultimate yes on the part of humanity to Our Lady saying, we want the full-blown power of your intercession. We want your full actions as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. And remember, those titles are really very simple. Co-redemptrix means the mother suffering, the mother who suffered like no one else for us with Jesus. Mediatrix means the mother nourishing, that she's, uh, as the Second Vatican Council says, she's, she's a mother to us in the order of grace. She's bringing us the graces we need. Thirdly, advocate. She's the mother pleading. She's the mother protecting and defending her children in the grave needs of our, of our contemporary times, but throughout history. So three truths coming from one mother. It's not a triple dogma request. It's a single dogma request in these three aspects. 28 years after Amsterdam, we go to Akita, Japan, church approved apparitions, uh, 1973 to 1981, approved by Bishop John Ito in 1984 after a long consultation with Cardinal Ratzinger. As Bishop Ito said, Akita is the continuation of Amsterdam. A couple keynotes. First of all, the statue that weeps 101 times in Akita is the statue of the Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam. Secondly, the guardian angel of the visionary, Sister Agnes, taught her the prayer of the Lady of All Nations in preparation for her visits to Our Lady. Thirdly, the spiritual director of Sister Agnes said, the message of Akita is the message of the mother co-redemptrix. So it is all directed once again towards this climax. So, Miraculous Medal, Lourdes, Fatima, Amsterdam, Akita, they're all seeking, it, as well as many we don't have time to cover in this quick little chat, they're all seeking the fulfillment of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which as my old friend John Hafford, the founder of the Blue Army, said, uh, the, the world apostle Fatima, that triumph can only happen with the proclamation of the dogma. And it is a, a prerequisite for peace. Remember at Fatima, she says, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph, a period of peace will be granted to the world. That's the same peace Our Lady of All Nations is talking about in Amsterdam and confirmed by Our Lady of Akita. So really, my friends, it's, it's up to us. We are living at the climax of the age of Mary. I encourage you to pray and to petition Pope Francis. Uh, this is just Catholic precedence. If you want to pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, you can download it. Uh, it's a beautiful prayer, which Our Lady said would prepare the way for this proclamation. Remember that this movement had already been has already been in the church for over 100 years. Started in 1950 by Cardinal Mercier, confirmed by St. Maximilian Kolbe in the early 20s. My friends, I believe the time is now. Uh, two things lead to great actions. One can be grace. The other can be tragedy. Uh, let's do heaven's bidding with this. Uh, what I believe to be authentic messages from Our Lady. These are church-approved apparitions calling for the proclamation of the Fifth Marian Dogma. You can do your part by, number one, praying daily the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. You want to get free copies, you can give us a call. Uh, in the States, it's 740-937-2277. Or from anywhere in the world, Mary at motherofallpeoples.com. Let us know. We'll send you free prayer cards of the Lady of All Nations. Secondly, petition Pope Francis. He is a very approachable Holy Father. Ask him to crown Our Lady. If you want to send a petition online, you can go to crownmary.com. And uh, these are periodically sent to the Holy Father every couple months, as we did on October 13th with a beautiful statue of uh, Our Lady of Fatima. Uh, Keep this in your heart and your prayers, my friends, because Our Lady's done all she can to help us, but now we have to help her help us. That is, through our human consent, we have to free her. Let's do the two action steps she asks. Praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, petition the Holy Father for the Fifth Marian Dogma, because we can use the peace. We can use the prevention of degeneration, disaster, war. We can use a historic release of grace, which would be so 
key for the, the, the multi-form challenges we're facing today. So we're living at the climax of the age of Mary. I believe that we're here with a certain responsibility to follow Our Lady's call for peace. Let's each do our part. Thanks for being with us at Mary Live. Again, you can always join us. Typically, it's noon Eastern time uh, every Wednesday, uh, or you can send your questions in. We'll talk about them. It's a worldwide talk about the beauty of our Blessed Mother. Let's always remember the words of Jesus, to behold our mother. Thanks. God bless. See you next week.